and your little dog too. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Unless you live in the hood. Whatever happened to the lollipop kids? <laughs> the lollipop kids. So there's like so many theories of what The Wizard of Oz is really about. And I'm just thinking of the storybook that we all see, right? When we were little and there's Dorothy and no place like home, right? Um, no, I wish I would have known this. This is crazy. But I think at the time I was like, I don't know, five, six. But anyway, um, one of the theories is that it's a parable on populism. Okay, um, the American monetary policy. Let me break this down. Dorothy represents the common citizen, all right? The Tin Man is the industrial worker. The Scarecrow is a stand-in for farmers. And then the Cowardly Lion, he's the politician William Jennings Bryan. <laughs> so they're traveling along this yellow brick road, which is the gold standard, to see the wizard, who could represent at the time President Grover Cleveland or William McKinley. Now, Oz... The city of Oz itself is the abbreviation, get this, for the ounce, O-Z. That's the abbreviation for ounce, which is, of course, the standard for measuring gold. And then the green of the Emerald City. Remember, remember the Emerald City? Well, that represents the dollar. <laughs> the Wicked Witch of the East represents the banker. And then the Wicked Witch of the West, who, remember, gets killed by water, that was the drought. So this theory was put forth in the 60s by a high school teacher named Henry Littlefield. Isn't this crazy? And I'm just thinking it's just Dorothy, right? There was a tornado and she was just trying to find her way home. That's why we should all like still like cartoons. We got to pay attention to those. There's meaning behind all of this. It's not just for kids. There's even a religious allegory here. So um, <laughs> the Wizard of Oz has been seen by many Christians as an allegory of faith. Okay, so consider this. The Yellow Brick Road being the path to enlightenment. The characters encountering a variety of emblems of sin and temptation along the way toward the Emerald City, which is heaven right it's kind of like heaven so also the wicked witch is killed with water which suggests baptism <laughs> that's crazy and then in the atheist allegory um god aka the wizard he isn't real and there's a mortal behind the curtain and all that spiritual mumbo jumbo is not real or it can be a feminist allegory right anyone who actually had any real power in oz Dorothy and the witches are female. Who runs the world? <laughs> then, of course, my favorite was Glinda the Good Witch. They say might have actually been the true villain. How did they make her a conspiracy theory? They say that she talked too much about the death of the Wicked Witch, right? So she was celebrating and taunting all the witch's sisters. And then there was the simple fact that Glinda knew the ruby slippers would send Dorothy home. And she hides that from Dorothy. And then sends that girl off to do the dirty work for her. So <laughs> she knew all about these slippers. They're saying that the good witch was actually the bad witch. This is not turning out to be the story that I remember as a little girl. It's kind of like when I went to go see the Ark. Yeah, you got to check out the Ark Encounter because see stuff like this makes you think twice about all the stories you read as a kid. I thought she was just trying to get home. Where are my slippers at?